can live forever. CC2, why do you hate your fans? What's up guys, X here with my first ever rant video, and today I'll be talking about the new season pass announcement for Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. I am extremely unhappy about this. First off, the game is 3 months away from being released. Why are you announcing 3 DLC packs CC2? Why are you giving us a season pass? Season passes are a cancer of the gaming community. It's used so publishers can get more money for a game than they should, making fans of the series spend more than they should. Why is this a bad thing? Well, let's first take into account for the pricing. Storm 4 will cost around $50 to $60 just for the game alone. Now, with this announcement, in order to own a completed copy of Storm 4, we have to pay 22 US dollars for DLC that should not be paid for. That's about 72 to 82 dollars excluding tax. CC2 wants us to pay that much money for a single game. That's outrageous. Not to mention, 22 dollars is not worth the money for the DLC being offered anyway. Now, let's take a look at what people who purchase this season pass will be given. There are three DLC packs. The first DLC pack includes one new 3 hour story scenario, one new costume, 14 ultimate jutsus, one ninja treasure set, 10 ninja info cards, 10 matching voices, and 10 costumes from previous storm games. The second pack includes the same stuff as the first, but only includes 3 team ultimate jutsus. DLC pack 3 includes the same stuff as DLC pack 2, but the 3 hour story is replaced with 4 new characters. Now what the everlasting hell is this crap? Let's start off first with the story scenarios. While I enjoy the fact that people will be getting an extended story for their game, I'm not happy about the fact we have to pay for it knowing that it's already completed. Story DLC is fine and all, but announcing it months before the game is out is a big middle finger to the fans. Now, Storm 3 announced months after the game's release that a full burst edition was going to be released. For people who don't own the game, they can buy a better version straight off the bat, or for those who own the original Storm 3, they can pay an extra $15 for it. Now while I felt that $15 was a little much, I was still okay with it. Why? Because it was announced after the game was released. It included graphical improvements, online balancing, an expansion to the story, and a new character. Even though graphic and balancing should have been just a patch. This DLC was announced after the game's release, and since this was announced after the game came out, I was fine. But this? Not acceptable, even if we get story. The next thing is a new costume. Why in the world would I want to spend money for a costume? Costumes give zero improvement towards gameplay experience and is a complete waste of money. Why they thought this is worth being paid for is beyond me. Next, we'll also be getting Team Ultimate Jutsus, so CC2. You mean to tell me that you're making us pay for a finishing move even though it does about the same damage as any other finishing move in the initial game? All it does is look cool and flashy. There's no value in paying for something like this aside from oohs and ahs. And odds are, the new team ultimate jutsus are going to be for characters who are overused like the John Cena memes. For characters like Hashirama, Minato, Naruto, or any of the vastly overrated Uchiha characters. Especially... Itachi. Ugh. I don't even have plans to main any of the characters I just mentioned, so I'd be wasting my money on something like that. Moving on, we'll be getting a ninja treasure set. Treasure set? What the fuck is that? What, are we gonna get a crossover of One Piece and Luffy sneaks into the game? Are these treasure chests gonna contain money for the story? What about ninja tools? Is that what we're gonna get? If so, then what's the point? We can't use the tools online, so using it for a story we'll probably be playing through only once or twice is really pointless. But for now, I'll wait until we get more info on whatever these chests include, but I highly doubt it's anything useful. Next, let's move on to ninja info cards. Hold up, you mean you want us to pay money for an in-game avatar? We have plenty of ninja info cards in the base game as it is, and people don't even use all of them as far as I've seen. Hell, people barely care about them at all. Sure, they get them for collection purposes for trophies or achievements, but that's it. 
Why would I pay for something I'm never going to use? I only use Datara Ninja Info cards as my avatar. Odds are these are going to include Uchiha's or other characters I care nothing for. Next, people will be getting matching voices. Wait, what? So we have to pay for voices? Voices? Who cares about voices? I play the game for the gameplay and story. I don't give a rat's ass for the voices of characters. What value does this have? Nothing. What, are we going to pay for an older voice of Naruto? Sounds stupid to me. Now, I understand that sometimes voices impact how you want to play. Like, for example, most people play in Japanese voices. Okay, that's just a language. What are voices going to do? Actual new voices. That makes no sense and is useless to pay for. Next up, previous DLC costumes from past Storm games. Okay, CC2. Who hired people at Konami and EA to work for you? Who is the dumbass that gave the bright idea to make people pay for costumes that people already paid for once before? Is it hard to make older costumes a part of the base game? Are there sticks so far up your ass you think it's fair to make people rebuy costumes that they bought in the past already? It's disgusting that this is even an option. Whatever you're smoking, share some with me. And finally, we get four new characters. Okay, so this, along with more story mode, is about the only thing that can improve gameplay quality and experience. However, only four? If you want people to buy characters, you can't just expect them to give only four. That's not worth $22. And although the DLC would be sold separately for $11, is it really worth it for four characters? Odds are this is going to be characters that should have been in the main game, like the Sound 4, characters from Naruto The Last, and the Boruto movie. However, this could include other characters we wouldn't have expected. People who see me in streams or comments or even on Twitter know me for being one who hopes for filler characters like Gurren, or underappreciated characters like Omoi to be in the game, and these two characters are some I'd actually use as part of my mains, but for the way things are, it's not even worth it getting these characters. So now we've talked about why everything is all wrong here. Now obviously, I'd be okay with all this DLC if it was released for free. Everyone would. If that was the case, this video wouldn't even have been made. Unfortunately, CC2 doesn't give a rat's ass about their fans and only cares about green paper. Now of course, as I said before, I wouldn't mind if these DLCs were announced at least two weeks after the game's initial release. However, that's only if they started working on it after the game's released. Now, let's say CC2 instead decided to release some things for free and then later on some paid for DLC. That's fine with me. Take a look at Witcher 3. Witcher fans have been getting months of free DLC for the game and only recently was the first paid DLC announced. Personally, I think that's perfectly okay. There was enough time passed after the release for a paid DLC to be announced. If Storm 4 followed Witcher 3's approach, no harm, no foul. But that would only work if the only things we'd pay for are the extended stories and characters. Would I pay $10 for a 6 hour story extension? Hell yes. Would I pay $5 for 4 new characters? Fuck yeah. But only if these were announced after the game came out and by the choices we're getting, it seems like all the DLC is either completed or near completed. So why do we have to pay for something that could have been added to the full game upon release? Because companies like CC2 are greedy. Hell, CC2 even once said that only true fans, quote unquote, would pre-order the game. That's about the biggest fuck you to fans ever. But what about the people who can't afford to pre-order? What if they got kids to take care of, bills to pay? Did you not take things like that into account? Or did you, but you don't care? Now, while the pre-order thing doesn't affect me negatively, it's still unfair to the fans of the games and or series that they would be left out of content. These decisions made by CC2 are making me believe that they are becoming the Konami of the anime games industry. And why am I making this rant? It's because I care about the people in the gaming community, not just myself. The reasons companies get away with milking us for every penny we have is because gamers don't stand up and say anything to stop it, usually. Recently, Payday 2 added safes and microtransactions to their game even though they promised they wouldn't. But the gamers spoke up and got rid of it, I'll bet, only in a small form. But if we actually speak up to CC2 and not sit idle by 
and ejaculate over how much of a fanboy or fangirl one is to the series, we can get a complete game and share the same fun experience with everyone else who wants the game. But after Season 2 announced this ridiculous DLC scam, I'm 70 to 80% sure I will not be buying Storm 4 with my own money. Of course, I don't expect anyone to get it for me, be they friends, family, or people who watch my content for me to get the game for me. So odds are, it's possible that there won't be any Storm 4 videos on this channel. And for that, you can blame CC2 for being utter shite. And I'm sure there's going to be people who don't even watch this video all the way through. And as soon as they hear I don't like the DLC, they're going to be typing in their comments, insulting me while they hide behind their little keyboard being little keyboard warriors, calling me a faggot, saying I'm not a true Storm fan, saying I'm just salty because I can't afford it. And these are the people that cause game companies to take advantage of us. YouTubers like Jim Sterling and Main Event TV are some of the few people who actually understand what needs to be done. And now it's my turn to help this entire community of gamers stand up and speak up against this ridiculous crap like season passes and DLC announced before a game is even released. And someone recently told me that this is how gaming is and literally, quote unquote, every game has a season pass these days. Dead Realm doesn't, CSGO doesn't, Kingdom Hearts doesn't, so obviously not every game uses a season pass. And the ones that don't are usually the more entertaining ones. I'd rather play a game like Dead Realm where we get free updates instead of a game like the new Star Wars game where to get all the goodies we need a season pass. So CC2, I have a question for you. Like Main Event TV says, CC2, what the fuck were you thinking? If you enjoyed this rant, leave a like, and if you didn't like this rant, go ahead and leave a dislike. Let me know in the comments on why you liked or disliked it, and if you want to see more rants like this one, leave suggestions in the comments, and I'll see you all on the next rant.